Before getting started with the parallax doors, it's important that you get to know what the different panel and frame styles represent. To start, if you look at the location on your network where the libraries are saved and go to the correct Revit version, you'll find a series of door folders. The parent door families are broken into folders for double doors with two panels, single doors with one panel, and triple doors with three panels. And of course, the unit doors discussed previously are in their own folders. If you also go into the folder that's just called doors, you'll find that there are folders of subcomponents that are used in each of the doors. You'll find the door frames, the door panels, the door hardware, and then you'll find some other subcomponents like 3D clearances and profile families and door swings, most of which the users won't have to use on a day-to-day -day basis. If we start with the frames, you'll notice that their naming convention is based on three things. There is a prefix of FRM as mentioned previously, and then there is a number. Following the number, there is then a materiality and a profile version. So essentially what we're saying is this is frame 00 with style hollow metal 1. Um, as you'll find out in the future, that is just a typical hollow metal profile. If you were to look at frame 00 hollow metal 2, you'll probably discover that that is very similar to hollow metal 1, except there is no door stop in the profile. Uh, similarly, frame 00 AL1 is the same style frame, except it's in aluminum and the profile reflects such. How do you know what the numbers represent in terms of the frames? The frames are numbered logistically based on different series of styles. So the F0 line is basically standard frames, and then the last, the last number in the name is just a, uh, a variant. So your F00s are your perfectly typical door frames. Your F01 is your very specific double egress frame, where the frame is broken in the middle and the profile is reversed. F02 basically has the intermediate style uh, for use in double doors where you want the intermediate style, but keep in mind, F00 is also a perfectly valid frame for double doors as well, as long as they don't need the intermediate style. The gist of what you should take away from this is the F0 line is basically standard frames that don't have any side lights and don't have any transoms. As you move through the library, you'll then discover that everything in the F10 series of frames are door frames that have transoms only. So there is a standard transom, there is a transom with an intermediate style, there are then transoms that are subdivided, and then there are side biased transoms as well. As you progress through the frames, you'll discover that the F20 series of frames are frames that have side lights only. So your F20 is your single side side light. Your F21, which is not pictured in this guide here, is one side light on each side with no intermediate style. Your F22, of course, is a side light on each side with an intermediate style, and then they proceed from there. Um, not full height side lights, uh, side light each side, uh, side lights both on one side biased. As we progress to the F30 series, you'll discover that the 30s are a combination of side lights and transoms. So we have a standard transom and side light combination. We have transom and side lights with intermediate styles, transom and side lights biased, uh, transom and side lights with an operable window above. Okay. As we proceed, you'll find that your F50 series is basically for sliding doors, and then you're getting into more specialty frames like the F60s, where you'll see that these are basically your overhead door frames. Now the parallax door library is not 100% error proof, so if you do try to use a frame that is made for a specialty door like an F60, in a standard single door it will probably error out and delete the door uh, because it's not possible to use this frame in a standard door. Um, finally, your F70 series are basically your double acting frames where the uh, pivoting hinges are exposed and visible um, from either side. 
there are more frames than these seven basic series. You'll also find that the commercial sliding doors have very specifically named uh, frames such as SOSX, and those are based on a particular manufacturer that was used as the basis of design for those libraries. We'll show you those uh, in a little bit. Moving on to the panel types, these uh, are named a little bit closer to an industry standard. Uh, for instance, you'll notice that a panel F is a standard flush single material panel. Now, similar to the frames, in this door library you'll notice that it will be an F-HM or an F-Wood. That's basically because the panels may have different dimensions and uh, styles based on the, or the material that's being used for that particular panel. For instance, the FN full height vision light panel in hollow metal may use six inches for a style and six inches for the light, but when a similar door is used uh, that is made out of wood in the project, it may have different dimensions based on where it's being used. And for that reason, we separate all the frames into their respective materials. Now, this is not an all-encompassing list of the panels, but you'll basically find that D is uh, uh, a loose industry standard for a Dutch door panel, whereas E is uh, a wood paneled uh, door. The E's are numbered with integers that follow based on the number of panels in either direction. So there are two panels in a single column, that's 21. There are three panels in a single column, that's 31. And there are three panels in two columns, that's 32. This is not an all-inclusive list of panels, by the way. If you get into your library, you will find out that there are more than are shown in this guide. Similarly, you will find that some of the panels are named with a dash and have a specialty condition at the end, such as bifold panels. Like the overhead door frames, bifold panels will not allow you to put them in any of the doors other than the bifold doors. If you try to use a specialty panel in a place it's not meant to go, it will simply error out and delete the doors. It's important to know that all of these panels can also be edited in the project themselves. So if you have a project where you do not want the vision light or the styles and rails to be six inch dimensions, you're able to edit panel type FN globally for your entire project. We'll go over that in a little bit. In addition to the panels and frames, you'll also find out that there is a small number of hardware components uh, meant to simply represent hardware in the project should you choose to be showing hardware. For instance, there is a push component and there is a pull component. If they are turned on, you'll see them on either side of the door, and then using the push and pull selector will let you change them to various things. Most of the hardware that's provided in the library is extremely generic, but you can open any of the hardware families and do a save as if you want to make more specific hardware. An example is if you have pull type one, which is shown as a very generic pull, you can then switch it for a pull type that's called VC, which stands for continuous vertical. And you'll see that the hardware has now swapped itself out for a continuous vertical pull. Similarly, if we're on the push side of the door, if you switch push one to push P1, which is panic hardware one, you will see the panic hardware show up as well. If you then also turn on the other hardware, parameters, you'll see those families show up as well, which we're going to go over in more detail in a later video. For now, what you need to know is there is a hardware library, and each hardware type also lists what, what location or what type of hardware it's meant to be used on. There are pull components, push components, a single lock set, a single kick plate for the push side, and a single closer. If you would like to make a different closer, you can edit the closer family or do a save as to the closer family. Similar to the panels and frames, it's important to know that the push components should only be used in the push parameter and the pull components should only be used in the pull parameter and so on and so forth. There are also clearance families, uh, but these by and large should not need to be edited um, by the project teams as they are already set up. So we will go over how to actually use all of these components in the next video.